They must be put all our eggs in the one basket with no returning imports and and doing seemingly, and I may be wrong here, but you know, even interviews have suggested that this is the case. We seem to have done absolutely nothing about imports until John Tripp came in, which to me is just seems to be madness. And surely the club knew that these imports were not coming back. I mean, I can't remember what the timelines were in terms of signing and what have you, but I think we all kind of knew fairly, fairly early on um, that you know the the clan to storm exodus was was going to happen. We even yeah. talked about it in terms of who that would be and and what have you. So I mean, that was that was very, 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 very shortly after the season ended that we discussed all the sort of things that would probably go on. So. It still makes me wonder, did the organisation, I, I mean, did Brayhead Clan not think, well, OK, how are we going to deal with this? Are we going to try and bring people back? Are we are we going to go out onto the market and see what's there and maybe try and get some get some players in? Or, do, or was it just sit on our hands and wait for the coach to arrive? And it's a, unfortunately, it's the latter that seems to have happened. And it's fine for John Tripp, quite rightly, to say now, well, you know, I'm going to take my time and, and pick my players. He has to say that. What else is he going to say? Well, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe nobody said to him this as a, a, a you know a fifty. What is it now? Fifty six game, fifty four game, whatever it is. League. Um, the, the first league game matters as much as the last. Maybe he would um, the, the North American attitude. You no, know, it doesn't matter as long as we make the playoffs and we can take it for there. Did did and you'd love to think surely somebody sat him down and said, "This is how it works here." You know, we have to be ready for the off. Because it's a big, think, do you know it's a big. Mm. See, this this is that comes brings me back to one of the things I wanted to talk about, where people keep talking about rebuilding. We are rebuilding. How can we be rebuilding if this goes tits up? Every single import will probably piss off and we'll be rebuilding next year. That's the way this league works. You can't rebuild in this league. I just don't buy into this rebuilding. Yes, you've got a new coach, but that this rebuilding seems to imply that, well, you know, we're not really going to get anywhere this year because we're rebuilding. I'm paying the same price as I did last year. In fact, I'm playing a bit more, and and the year before, and the year before, I'm not getting rebuilding prices. If you know what I mean, I want the team to come out and be competitive for day one. Um, I don't buy, I don't like this rebuilding piss. It's it's piss. It's all, well, re- it's all rebuild, it is. yeah, rebuilding's nonsense. I mean, I what, Manchester, Steve, what, a, what, what a Manchester football Storm team, doing. and you've got a youth academy, and yeah. you're talking about building from from youth, and yeah, we might have a two or three, four years before we get any pay off it. I can believe that. We don't even have a youth team, so what are they talking about? Yeah, sorry I mean, if you're to use you, but... a, No, that's okay. If you want to use the term rebuilding, then you can probably talk about something like either a team that's coming into the EIHL for the first time, hello Milton Keynes, hello Guildford, or a team that's under new ownership, hello Manchester Storm. You can't use it for us. We're a season eight team. Yep. We should be, I, mean, I said this a couple of shows ago, we should be so much better than this now as an organisation. We should know what we're doing, when we're doing it, and unfortunately, the as it comes across to to some of us, that doesn't appear to be the case at all. We seem to be just, I don't know, just blindly uh, scrambling around. And I mean, in terms of overall organisational strategy, we're blindly scrambling around. Uh, I mean, it's fine, don't get me wrong, I'm sure Mr Black's over the moon because we had a sellout last week and, and we've talked about this before. I don't mean to criticise Mr Black because at the end of the day he's our owner and, and obviously, you know, he's he's running the Brayhead clan to make money. But that's fine, but you won't get many more sellouts at this rate. This club has to be successful. This is something we've been saying consistently since this podcast began. I've been banging on about it for five years as, you know, when I started going on about the conference system being the end of us. And I still believe that. I still think that our problem started when the conference system started. It limited standards that we have to meet. We are measuring ourselves against Fife and getting hammered by them when we should be measuring ourselves against clubs like Belfast Giants. We're not. Okay, and and we can talk about budgets and everything else. I mean, I still maintain the, 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 the opinion, rightly or wrongly, that we make plenty of money. And I would argue that potentially we're not seeing all of that uh, you know, being properly invested in the on-ice product. I'll say no more than that. Um, but nevertheless, you have to aim high, and we're not. We're aiming, and sorry, Fife, we're aiming low. That's why I call the Scottish Conference Division 3, because I know okay, it's early days and the league table's reflecting it, but I'd be surprised the league table looks much different in terms of how the conferences work out by the end of the season. I hope I'm wrong, because I hope we're as high up that league as possible. But I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't work out that way. 
Yeah, well, the league table as it stands just now, and we're the only... You know, most teams have played six, seven, eight games, um, apart from the Scottish teams who've been concentrating on the Challenge Cup group, Fife, Edinburgh and Dundee, but... Um, yeah, it's the four Scottish teams that are all out the playoff picture at the moment and occupying the bottom four places. Um, I have to say, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think, though, another risky part of this strategy, um, the, very, the most risky part of this strategy of signing late is that if the results don't improve and we see performances like we did against Saturday over the next three or four weeks, You'll be lucky if you get the season tickers and a cup ticket holders and a couple of hundred, and even then, the season ticket holders probably won't turn up for every game, um, and that is where, in the long term, that we will suffer because that will have an impact on next year's budget, and that's why I believe you can't rebuild in this league. You just can't do it. We, as a club, um, rely predominantly on bums on seats. That's what the, everybody keeps talking about: bums on seats for our income. Um, if we have a shit season and have a, a shit average attendance and it goes down again, uh, it could scarily go down if, if this doesn't improve drastically, then, um, you know, next year we'll have an even worse budget. Um, I would imagine uh, my, my, budget my, on the year before. So Yeah, my concern's even more immediate than that. I'll tell you something else that's probably likely to happen, and I may be completely wrong here, but I wouldn't be surprised. If we have a disastrous weekend next weekend, and I sincerely hope we don't, I can see maybe one or two faces going. Now, if you let one or two, yeah. If you see one, if, and if you let one or two players go, whether it's to send a message to the roster, whether it's to send a message to the fans, which is probably 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 more of a reason I would suggest. Uh, and you're already short bench, you're already an import down, and you've got an import out injured. Where does that leave you? But yeah. and I don't want to repeat a season three because that's exactly what happened in season three. We let go of players. Um, the ownership got involved, and we let go of players, which. Well, you know, at the time, I thought it was probably the right move because of the circumstances surrounding it. But we know subsequently that it just created more problems within the dressing room, more problems, really, really deep-seated problems. Um, so if we go down that same road again, we this club can't afford to repeat of season three, especially when it could potentially have been avoidable all along yeah. um, through having a far better summer strategy. See, that was another comment that a few people said to me talking on Saturday night between periods, because um, even, as I said, after the first period, a lot of people didn't like what they'd seen, and even after the second period, it was pretty obvious that it wasn't happening. Um, the first the first kind of about two, three, four years, maybe even five years, a lot of people were really just happy to have hockey back in the west of Scotland and would, would happily have watched anything, uh, even... 10 nil gubbins at home, they would have watched it because they were happy to have hockey. A lot of people were saying to me, we're past that now, and which we rightly should be. There's a lot of people who say, yeah, I'm glad we've got hockey, but surely with the crowds are pulling in and stuff, and, you know, we've got the arena there, and there's a, I'm sure there must be another lease signed. You know, we're quite stable in that sense. Um, there is an interest in it. Surely we are now at the stage where people aren't happy just to have hockey anymore. They want good hockey, they want, they pay, we pay good money, some of the ticket prices at Brayhead are among the highest in the league um, we're paying good money we need. We, we deserve to have a really good team on the ice, none of this rebuilding nonsense um, and people were saying to me on Saturday night, that's the way things have gone there is still, I think there's still a good percentage, maybe I don't know, 20, 25 maybe more percentage of the fan base who's just, are just happy to have a Saturday night out and go to the hockey but there's a, and a bigger percentage, I think, who will say, yeah, we're happy to have hockey, but if it's crap, I won't be spending my money on it. I'll, I'll be going elsewhere with my money, you know? Yeah, uh, this, is what ha this is what happens when a club matures, and that's what we're doing. I mean, it's, this is a natural process, and you're right. I mean, you know, I can remember back still to the early days when I, I fitted that category exactly. I just wanted to, I fell in love with hockey. It was still pretty new to me, although I followed the NHL, but, you know, I hadn't followed the EIHL and I fell in love with it almost straight away as soon as the clan started. And that was me. And yeah, for the first couple of seasons, 
everything was all shiny and new and fantastic, even when things didn't go your way. But then you become invested in it. I don't just mean, you know, I don't just mean financially. I mean emotionally and every other way. And then you do daft things like start up a podcast and all that sort of nonsense. And <laughs> but but you know, I mean, it's you know, but there's a lot. There's a lot of people. I mean, I'm seeing comments on social media now from people who have only been coming three or four years, but they've done the same thing. They've they've they've, they've transitioned into getting really fully invested in it and that's the biggest asset that the club has the good old purple army you know uh, the purple pound and everything else that comes with it i mean what a fantastic advantage that that this club potentially has in terms of the potential size of support or location and everything else everything that's going for the clan the fact that we can sell out still sell out fantastic all of that is brilliant but it's not going to last long unless this club is gets its act together in so many other ways. And it's a shame, and I hate talking like this. I mean, I know when people listen to this podcast, they're going to go, and I always get the same comments, you know, you, you, you sound like you want the club to fail, you sound like you're enjoying about the club not doing well. And I'm like, well, no, well, I, I get very, very occasional comments like that, and I, I always respond with the same thing. This, this term, happy clapper, I, there, there's... There's room in any fan base for happy clappers because it needs any sports club needs happy clappers. The type that will just, you know, be behind anything that's going on, whatever it is, because they want to turn up, they want, they want to support their team, and that's fine. It, there's, you know, you might even argue that maybe the majority of the fan base should be like that if they love the sport and everything else. Um, but the other thing as well is, <laughs> is my smoke alarm just going off. I was going to say, is that your kettle? You go out of kettle. My smoke alarm just going off. Uh, it'll be off in a second. Hold on. <laughs> Well, I'm not taking that out. Cause just... uh, that, by the way, that was a smoke coming out of my ears at the time that said that off. Probably. Do you know, <laughs> I see what you're saying, though. It's like, I would, I would say, do people not think that we would not rather come on and say, wasn't that a great 7-1 win at home to Fife? And look at how well you know, Ryan Patoni got a hat-trick and look at how well the D were playing and look at all the great stuff we're doing off. The... Do people not think we'd rather come on and talk about stuff like that? But if it's not happening, we can't make it up. No, and we've but, got to give our opinion. That's what it's all about. Exactly. But this is what I say about, you know, the, unfortunately, when you have a lot of happy clappers, um, the downside to that is that it holds the club back. You have to be challenging things. You have to be questioning things. You have, And it's not to be destructive. I mean, as, I, as, I, as I've said to a number of people in the past, fine, I'll be critical, but hopefully most, if not all the time, I'll, be, I'll, I'll come out with something that's positive with it as well. So if the club doesn't do it this way, maybe they might want to do it that way. You know, that's it's constructive criticism. You want things to be better. The simple fact is, and it's happened, you know, there's, there's people out there who will chastise fans because they're not happy with what they get. These are the people that don't do the club any favours. They might do it with the best of intentions, and I'm sure they do, and that's honourable, but they're not helping the club. The club, the, the club fan base should be should be pushing the club forward. Should be pushing the management. Should be pushing the players, the coach, everybody. And I think I think we're starting to see quite a bit more of that now, which is good. Um, and it's not really down to us as a podcast to do it as such. And hopefully, we're just reflecting some of the, you know, some of the common opinions that are out there. But I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that will disagree with us. But again, I've always said this: we should be pushing this club forward. And that means challenging things. It's not trying to be destructive. We're not trying to cost anybody their job or anything like that. But we've got to keep pushing this thing forward because if you don't, you end up in the situation that you have now. This club could potentially be regressing right now. Potentially. And that's a fairly strong word to be using under the circumstances. But that is the danger that we have here. The whole Scottish Conference thing, I think, is a potential big problem. We've got the smaller teams being the tail wagging the dog. And as usual, it's the clan that are suffering because we've got to be the teenagers sat at the kids' table while the adults get a chance to talk. That's exactly what's happening to us with this conference system right now. And it's been happening now for five years. So... That doesn't do us any favours whatsoever. It might help the other Scottish clubs, but as I've said before, it gives them a buy to be bad uh, or maybe not that very good and not try that very hard. Um, so, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that's the way it's gone. But as I say, if we lower our sights enough, then we end up where we are today. And that's not meant as anything against John Tripp, who's only just in the door five minutes. I'm talking about us as an organisation going into our eighth season completely unprepared, which is how it seems to me. Just to touch and, uh, uh, and you know, give an example of what you were talking about there, you only have to go 
was it four or five miles down the road to a large football club whose fan base didn't hold their owners to account and say, well, where's all this money coming from? Um, and look what happened to them. Now, I'm not suggesting that's what's happening here by any means. I'm just saying, if the fans don't take an interest in what is going on behind the scenes and how the club's getting run, then, you know, that's that's an example of what can happen. Um, it's good that I think, you know, there's people, 